uh, welcome to the start of the final week, uh, the final, well, full week, I should say, I guess, of quarter three. Um, obviously, at the end of this week, uh, well, we've got one day, haven't we? 30th of September will be Monday next week to wrap up the quarter, and we'll talk about this um, as we go through this week. But um, definitely looking forward to the week ahead. And so uh, following the French. We've had, some, we've had some French data that's just hit the wires that's just bringing a little bit of uh, risk off to the, uh, the vibe uh, this morning. So we've just seen the DAX break and, and move below Friday's low point. And heading down, I mean, the ne next level would be down here, which actually is quite a nice one. That's uh, Wednesday and Thursday's low down at 12,333. So the DAX and European equities more broadly under a bit of pressure. And I'll talk about this in a second in terms of looking at the numbers. We've got German PMI figures coming. Uh, they're due to be reported in about five minutes' time. So I'll cover those live. But the euro dollar, euro weakness just slipping down to have a little tester of uh, Friday's low, which was a key double bottom from back at the start of last week. So that's a really key area if you're looking at the euro dollar this morning. Then 110.65, um, very important and having a tester of that. Um, and just to give you that sense of the risk off vibe, whilst you've got the euro under pressure, stocks under pressure, uh, check out the Bund here that was scaling lower. Um, but actually it's flipped and, and managed to rally back up to test the pivot level now. So a bit of safe haven flow as that French data just disappointed. But before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of the, the French figures, um, let's have a look at the week ahead. Definitely uh, another interesting week um, coming our way. And certainly lots of, uh, as always, Brexit related situations to be thinking about. We've got the ongoing aftermath of those um, attacks on the Saudi oil production facilities um, and, and, you know, scanning and keeping an eye on how quickly Saudi can get oil back online. Um, I've got news f directly from Saudi Arabia, actually. I was there last week, so I can give you a bit of an update because as far as I see it, uh, the way the West are reporting this is not quite how things are being discussed over in Saudi. So I've got a little bit of an interesting insight on that, so I'll cover that as well. Um, but then, as always, packed um, data, um, uh, data calendar here. What's what's interesting today, tomorrow, and Wednesday? You can see the uh, the lead global leaders meet at UN General Assembly. So this is important for a few factors. Firstly, Brexit for sure. So Boris is going to be have uh, having meetings on the sidelines today with Merkel, with Macron. Uh, he's meeting Donald Trump uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, and that will probably be discussing mainly Iran, I would have thought. So you've definitely got Brexit and the Saudi and Iran situation, uh, very much uh, hot topics over in New York. So Boris got on the plane yesterday and is over there. So expect news flow. This is US time, of course, so it'll be more afternoon um, when you start to get little snippets of information that could well move markets on any of these topics. So definitely the UN General Assembly is a key headline risk uh, for the next three days, but particularly today, I would suggest. Um, outside of that, definitely some really important numbers coming our way this morning. Um, we get the preliminary uh, September uh, Purchasing Managers Index figures. So that's both for manufacturing and services. And so this is like the fresh update, the, the kind of most up-to-date figures from an economic perspective that we get each month. About two-thirds of the way through the month, we get these uh, European uh, PMI readings, the French figures um, have just hit the wires and have disappointed. I mean, here's the chart looking at the French manufacturing PMI, um, and it came in at 51, no, it didn't, it came in at 50.3, but we had expected 51.2. You can see that July was disappointing, we dipped below 50 again. I mean, it's been pretty erratic, I have to say, looking at this chart over the last 12 months, you don't normally see such volatility month to month here in this kind of reading. So that's one thing to note. But secondly, you know, the August reading, we lifted back to 51. It was like, wow, OK, all right, maybe maybe things in Europe aren't as desperate as we thought. Um, but we were looking for, a, 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 you know, a figure in September to match August's reading. So as I said, expected at 51.2 and it's just dropped back. I mean, at least I guess 
the silver lining maybe if there is one is that at least it's above 50 but still certainly disappointing uh, the services sector also delivered a, a worse than expected number if I have a look at the chart for that then one second here we go services PMI was at 51.6 and what we had hoped was 53.2 um, would be in the offing and you know pretty much matching what had been actually a nice solid improving trend through 2019 um, we were expecting that improving trend to still be the situation but unfortunately we've dropped off here so that's definitely concerning uh, we generally speaking have a uh, what you might call a recession fear in Europe um, as we've as we reach the end of quarter three are, are we in technical recessions of course you had the likes of Germany printing a negative GDP figure for quarter two are we going to see negative GDP GDP prints for quarter three I mean that's when you get a technical recession you need two quarters in a row of negative GDP figures so yeah certainly these French figures were not quite what the doctor ordered but if I just quickly um, flick back because we're about to get some German figures which you know certainly in the grand scheme of things from Europe's point of view would be more important given that Germany's the largest economy um, certainly on the manufacturing side and Seconds. we're going to get these German figures hit the wires now so I'm just going to let these come down the microphone straight to you Remember, the DAX has been under pressure. It's testing Thursday's low, right? 41.4, 41.4, oh. below the expected okay. 44. Services, 52.5, big miss on, below the big miss on German manufacturing here. Let's just flick and have a look at the charts. 49.1, below the expected 51.5. Such a US dollar has seen a break below 110. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely... Wow. And seen further um, downside in the DAX. So we've just taken out that double bottom here on the DAX. From around Let me just turn that down. So, you know, really disappointing again on the German manufacturing side. And it's such a core engine of their economic system, of course. Um, so that figure came in at 41.4. We had expected 44. Um, that's, uh, I mean, flick back to the chart very briefly. Another new low on what's been a pretty spectacular fallout. I mean, honestly, I've been trading for 18 years. I can't ever remember German manufacturing PMIs anywhere near 40, but um, quite shocking and really, you know, hammers home this point that Germany look, this look, looks like they're in recession. And we're probably going to see confirmation of that when we do end up getting the quarter three uh, GDP prints. But 41 I mean, wow, 41.4. Now, on the services side, it was worse than expected, but at least above 50. So on services, they were 52.5. We'd expected 54.3. Let me quickly show you the chart uh, for their services PMI. So it's quite a big drop off again. So look, bad numbers from France. Um, exacerbated by you would say even worse numbers from Germany here uh, the DAX was already on the downside anyway because of those French readings uh, but you would say that targeting that low point that we have back on the 17th now is probably the situation now we've pulled back we broke Wednesday Thursday double bottom it's also s2 we broke that and um, that's now key resistance what might be a nice sort of classic short entry and looking for a, a target at least I would say of that a low point that we had from last week. Um, on the flip side, if you've got stocks moving lower, well, bonds moving higher. So you've just seen the bond break up above Friday's top. Um, so on the on German bonds here, that was at 173.84. And if we just pull out a lo longer term period here, um, that that kind of area on Friday really was the, perhaps the more important level which we've we've moved on upwards here off this data was at 173.65 and that was that key bottom that we had back mid-September but on the upside now um, the standout kind of level is is this one roughly here which is that high point we had on the 12th of September before then where we're testing almost now is that low that we have back on the 5th okay so certainly Bund's had a steady slow drift north uh, throughout last week um, but now that's powering on off the back, back of these really bad PMI figures out of Germany look and you can see the Bund stepping up again there another little surge up through the top as we aim at testing that 5th of September low um, nice let me just get back to that DAX chart because that looked like a nail on nailed on classic short there off that Wednesday Thursday double bottom and S2 and we'll see how that plays out but certainly the euro is going south as you'd expect um, I told you about that 
level here from start of last week that I had test we'd been testing that on Friday that's gone now that's, that's gone in style here actually uh, we're 20 pips down through that already down through s1 um, let's have a check further back to see the last time we were at these kind of levels and really you're looking um, back now at these uh, this, this this point from back at the very start of September as well as that sort of flash um, spike to the downside we had on the 12th so these are down at 110 uh, 30 well 11003 11013 so really the 110 handle more broadly and when you look at a daily chart um, you, you know we, we obviously got below that um, a few weeks back but when you're looking at the continuation I should say here um, but certainly on the um, uh, the December contract, uh, the, the, almost like a double bottom down, the, down around the 110 handle. So we've got room further to go on the downside here. But definitely, definitely some disappointing figures here from two of Europe's powerhouses on the PMI front. Um, all right, so good active start to uh, the briefing. Uh, some live data coming through. Let's have a look at the uh, calendar again now, just looking more broadly out of the week I mentioned the G the UN General Assembly that's definitely important um, you got some Fed speak Evans and George and Kaplan talking out of the Fed on Wednesday you've got Draghi making some comments on Thursday along with Carney more Fed speakers so and then more Fed speakers on Friday you got a lot of Fed speak um, through this week um, certainly the most important economic data arguably you could say we've already just had it We'll get the EU as a whole printing their PMI figures at 9 um, a.m. Okay, um, German IFO data tomorrow is going to be closely watched, especially now after that really disappointing uh, PMI figures. You've got to be expecting some further bad news on German data uh, tomorrow morning, you would have thought. Um, in terms of U.S. data, quiet a week, normally the case, you know, as we get to the final week of the month, but... Um, we'll be looking for some inflation related figures that are due out on Friday with core PCE um, but you know definitely I would say uh, a negative tone set here for the week with regards to data but also you know that I'd pick out that UN General Assembly as the kind of uh, big headline risk um, so let's have a look we'll get back to the charts in a second and have a look at some of the other markets I know I'm only really focused on the European stuff there with the DAX the euro and the Bund. but we'll look at oil we'll look at US stocks we'll have a look at uh, gold and so on um, and, and cable um, in a minute but if we just have a quick look at the headlines that have kind of been hitting the wires uh, what are you waking up to this morning um, Johnson takes bid for Brexit deal to New York as clock runs down so as I already mentioned Boris is going to be having meetings on the sidelines um, with Macron and Merkel today. Um, Tusk is also in town over in New York, so uh, Donald Tusk will be getting in on the action. You'll remember that we had some, well, a bit of a throwaway positive comment from Juncker last week. Juncker back to, you know, he, Juncker does love a headline, man, so you've got to take his... Um, comments with a little bit of pinch of salt but certainly he suggested um, that there may well be room to um, remove the backstop and maybe there's there's a deal I mean Boris has been his, his official line um, is he, he's cautiously optimistic that he can make further progress in New York this week towards a deal um, he also said that don't expect a deal to be done in New York no way um, but you would say that probably, well, Boris is, is pretending at least that things are moving closer towards the idea of some kind of deal. I mean, I'm looking at cable here because we've had powerful moves to the upside at the back end of last week as we got these, uh, certainly Juncker's comments on Friday on up to the one, you know, up through the 126 handle, which had been such a key barrier on, on, on the Thursday. So we broke up through there on the Friday, but it all kind of came sharply back lower. And this morning, um, you know, that double bottom that we had back here on Wednesday and Thursday has just been taken out. This is a little bit of a sympathy move, I would say, right now with regards to, you know, it's the euro dollar that's, that's, the, that, that's the driver here um, off the back of this bad European data. And you're just getting a bit of a correlation move. But technically, this is important for cable as we break through that double bottom. And S1 is next up in terms of support. But ultimately, I guess, 
you know, you got that low from back here, the start of last week, and um, we had the low back at 124.37. Um, so the other obviously key thing today, probably we'll get the ruling from the Supreme Court, um, whether prorogation has been, uh, is it legal, is it not legal? I would say certainly at the start of last week, the government were pretty confident that the Supreme Court, remember what happened here, you had the English Supreme Court um, sit and rule that it was legal, you had then had the Scottish Supreme Court saying the opposite, that it was illegal. So now it's gone to the kind of UK-wide Supreme Court and at the start of last week, the government were confident that that court would say, look, this is not a legal matter, this is a political situation, it's not nothing to do with us. But I'd say as the week went on last week, probably the government's confidence waned and by the time we got to the end of last week um, you know perhaps they weren't quite as confident and that the Supreme Court and we'll find out today I mean at the timings of this I'll have to I'm not quite entirely sure but I mean, you get there's two schools of thought here if they do rule that it is illegal so then Parliament would would reconvene but then you've had news that maybe Boris will just prorogate Parliament again um, but um, if you could argue it could be pound positive if the Supreme Court announced it's illegal, of course, because that allows Parliament back into session, which you could say then opens the door for the uh, Remain MPs to um, have more time to try and disrupt uh, Boris's sort of no deal uh, strategy. But then you could argue the no deal threat is starting to work. Is it? I don't know. But is it starting to work with regards to the EU softening a little bit? Um, I guess we'll find out properly today when Macron and Merkel have had a chat with Boris and is there any chance and obviously we've got the situation where um, Ireland, well, as I flick over, well, I'll talk about Ireland and then the headline that I'm showing um, now if I go and have to show you my other screenshot but um, you know talk that uh, Ireland may well become this sort of economic unit where firstly you might have um, um, agricultural um, alignment between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland and maybe there's talk that well why can't you introduce uh, sort of manufactured goods into that equation and Boris said over the weekend well yeah maybe um, so I don't know maybe there's but maybe Boris is moving towards the idea that we can have some kind of Irish um, alignment but then what do you do about a border checks and is there a board border checks in the Irish Sea and, and and so obviously we're still a long way off and and that's the point to make I would suggest and so even though we've had some small movement towards the idea that maybe a deal could be on the cards um, they're a long way off and there ain't much time to go one thing on Europe's side you've had a little bit of pressure being put onto the European politicians from some of the giant European car manufacturers um, who are saying you know they would be very negatively hit by a no deal certainly the German car manufacturers are very reliant on the UK as an export market so um, you know that's kind of one of the headlines uh, rearing its head uh, this morning as well um, so with regards to cable yeah let's see we've got the Supreme Court hearing one but then separately very much separately you've got Boris meeting Macron and Merkel and so you could well see some headline risk today and maybe more this afternoon I would suggest and we'll see how this plays out but for now you've got cable breaking that double bottom from Wednesday and Thursday keep your eye on that Monday low from last week um, as we track sideways now let's let's I'm just conscious of time here so let's move on a little bit um, what else is happening so um, obviously we still got this oil related situation and I'm just going to flip down and uh, show you this, these bullet points just talking about the progress and you know are Saudi going to get oil back online quickly um, yeah I was just saying I was in Saudi Arabia last week and I was just going to mention that I do feel the western press are reporting this in a, in a very different way firstly um, the western press love a bit of sensationalization of course um, so I'd say it's been sensationalized a little bit what most of us here in the West don't realize is that um, there's drone attacks on Saudi um, oil facilities literally all the time um, they have so many drone attacks um, it's just that almost all of them have failed they're a little bit 
kind of botched jobs and not particularly well organized um, and therefore fairly inaccurate and, and fail to inflict much damage. Um, now, for sure, this drone attack, well, what is it, 10 days ago now, definitely hit the mark. So even though there are lots of drone attacks, this one definitely stands out as being uber successful if you're thinking from the point of view of the the people behind the attacks and who are behind the attacks well you've got actually one thing on boris now he's meeting trump tomorrow and boris certainly happy to to step up the rhetoric and, and uh, in blaming iran and also step up the offer for the uk to help uh, the us in kind of some kind of joint mission to protect uh, saudi oil and um, whether that's troops on the ground i probably doubt it at this point but it's certainly the use of um um, British surveillance and intelligence um, situations. So uh, Boris and Donald Trump will be talking tomorrow and certainly Iran and oil and, and Saudi will be on the agenda if we flick and have a look at the oil chart. So my point being that actually they get these drone attacks all the time. Obviously Saudi are trying to have a, an Aramco IPO so this, this news of attacks doesn't really get out. They like to keep this under wraps uh, for obvious reasons but um, the frequency of these attacks are quite high, so it's not particularly unusual there was an attack. It's just the damage that was inflicted. Uh, certainly the energy minister has been confident that they'd get oil back online pretty quickly. Um, I'd say that confidence hasn't quite um, come into evidence um, in that it's taking a bit longer than their very confident estimates of getting oil back online, which is why oil is still up around the top end of the sort of $50 spectrum. We're not above 60. I mean, 60 is obviously a key price point here when we're thinking about this week. Um, and certainly the last few days of last week, we spent in a fairly tight range. Uh, we've been up to test the top of that. Um, so the tight range, I'd say, of the consolidation phase would be between these two rectangles. So 57, 58 on the downside, that was the 18th of September low. And then the 19th of September high was at 59.50. So you've got this $1 range here, 50, 57, sorry, $2 range, 57.5 to 59.5. And, and we tested that overnight. We're kind of just drifting back into the middle of that range right now. So this is your consolidation range. Yes, oil is still a lot higher than it was pre attacks but then it's actually nowhere near as high as the, um, let's say, the attack spike high. And if you put a kind of fib series on this, the problem you've got as a trader here is that we're kind of in the middle. Um, the 50% fib of the, really, the, the, the range pre-drone attack to, to drone attack spike high, um, the 50 fib is just above the 59 handle. So. We'll cut. This is the consolidation point back in the last week is around this 50% area. It just remains to be seen, um, A, what might the US and the UK say about helping protect Saudi oil reserves? And obviously, B, probably more importantly, you know, what's the progress with Saudi getting things back online? Um, you know, I'd say, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see from Saudi. But certainly, in my view, you're probably going to see things get back online. We might drift. I'd say what's really important would be 57.58. Any test of that, any break of that, and you've got a pretty big gap here that still needs to get filled. You know, I'd say any break of 57.58, probably going to see a move down towards the $56 handle reasonably quickly. Um, but obviously, listening out for more news flow as we go through the week. Um, Okay, other stuff um, um, on the headlines. Um, we've got stuff like, well, if we just go to, uh, well, actually, let's, let's talk about Labour. There's the Labour Party conference. You know, you've got party conference season, of course. Labour in Brighton. You've got uh, the Conservatives next week. And Labour, nothing short of a shambolic, disastrous uh, beginning. I love this picture in the FT here. Um, uh, I'm supporting unity over division um, is the um, one of the kind of unite um, sort of slogans here but um, unity is the last word you would use to describe uh, the beginning of the Labour Party conference massive divisions internally on the Labour Party's stance on Brexit um, and this is just causing havoc 
Uh, you had the deputy um, leader ch almost trying to get being ousted um, uh, over the weekend. That f that that coup failed, and it's just been a shambolic disaster. So just as you know, I, you could say. In terms of the general election idea, and when an election comes, obviously we're not quite sure, but you would have thought it's nailed on for 2019 at some point. Um, whether it's after the 31st of October or not, we shall see, but most likely in November. Uh, but this is just a, a disastrous uh, period of time for um, Labour. And, and, and not only are they in danger of handing the Conservatives a much increased majority, I mean, it's got so bad, they need to be looking over their shoulder now at the Lib Dems, and dare I say they're at risk of becoming only the third uh, party um, when the election results come in. So certainly shambolic, but Corbyn digging in his heels for sure. He says he's, he's fresh and energised for the general election campaign. Um, but yeah, their they're, they're, they're kind of party conference has been a disaster. Other stuff... Uh, I don't know, UK-related stuff, Thomas Cook has gone under. Probably the least surprising headline of the morning. Um, but let me finish by looking at the charts. Uh, remember, we've got EU data hitting the wires in 10 minutes, but we've already had the German and the French manufacturing figures that were bad news. So you're going to see the same when European figures hit the wires. Um, but let's just check in, I guess. I haven't talked about gold. Let's have a quick look at gold. Whilst we've had this risk-off vibe um, this morning, um, gold has been up there. It, actually, since the European data, gold has not added to its upside. But um, this morning, we did break up above Friday's high. Um, let me get my... Uh, so Friday's high was here, up at 15.24.60. So we did move up above there in the early hours overnight. Then we drifted back lower, tested support. Um, I saw um, Michael... Uh, made a really good call at 8.06 a.m. Gold, low of the day and pivot. Michael, I hope you took on that trade. Definitely really nice setup. Um, and you've obviously the, the German figures played into your hands there. Um, I'd say the high of the day being first target. Um, as, you know, now, now that we kind of negotiate, well, I guess we got stalled a little bit by Friday's high, but high of the day, probably first target. Um, the, what was good about the low of... of of today was also the fact that it was that key top that we had back on Wednesday, just adding more support in around that sort of 1519 area. Um, so certainly gold on the front foot um, this morning off the back of those data. And I definitely think the key support is that Wednesday high. And as a platform, it's worked really well so far. But if we look further out for gold and look back over the last few weeks and look at September as a whole, then you know, definitely more room to move higher as well depending on headline flow, of course, as we go through the week. Um, but yeah, you mark up these kind of key levels, uh, certainly on the downside. I mentioned that Wednesday high, and the key thing about that, it was also the high on the 13th of September. So 1519, really important. Um, big double bottom down at 1492 area. Um, that was the 10th and the 18th of September. It's the double bottom for the month. Um, so we've been quite sideways over the last few weeks, you would say. Um, you know, obviously through the summer we had nice, you know, huge movement to the upside as we had the likes of um, the U.S.-China trade situation deteriorating. Obviously, that's turned maybe slightly more to the positive, you could argue. But again, it's been, it's been a bit quiet on that. We'll see if we get any commentary and developments on that as we go through this week. Obviously, then um, Boris being quite aggressive as he entered um, Parliament. But then again, that's kind of softened a little bit, as in the last few days, it's been more about Boris making progress on actually doing a deal rather than Boris, you know, trying to um, chop the legs out of Parliament in order to try and force a no deal Brexit on Halloween. So um, certainly gold is up at the top end of the trend that we've seen through the summer. Um, but certainly more shorter term, looking to try and push on again this morning off the back of this worse than expected European data. Um, OK, so I'm going to leave it there. That's it for the briefing this morning. And I'll, I'll leave you by just kind of flashing up the, um, the highlights for the week ahead. Definitely a busy one, but certainly um, that EU, oh, sorry, EU, UN General Assembly is going to be the key headline risk. Um, so as we kind of get towards midday and beyond and into this afternoon when the 
the US side of things wake up, uh, you need to be on your on the ball, uh, listening out for any uh, kind of headlines. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, enjoy today, enjoy the weekend. Thanks very much.